Hello, in this video I'll show you how you can accurately place and rotate your pivot and axis and custom grid. So I sometimes get these kinds of questions. Now, how do you snap the axis to an edge and also orientate one of the axis to follow the edge? It's a two-point snap that I just can't figure out in 3ds Max. So in order to do this, what I would do is just go into the splines and create a line spline here. You can right-click on this to activate your snaps to just see the snap settings and make sure grid points is active here to make sure the snaps is active all right now what you can do is simply left click here to create these kinds of lines here and one more all right so then i can just press one right away with this one selected to go into line and then vertex and i can snap this vertex right here and then also in the front viewport i can snap it up right here And I can make sure my pivot is also at zero. All right. You can press G to turn off the grid just to make sure the grid is not interfering with your lines here, not confusing you. Then you can simply attach all of these right here. You can give also a green object color. All right. So now we have this nice structure. We want to make sure there's no kind of rotations or scales on it make sure rotation is zero 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 scale is just a hundred all right then that's also going to create a panel and create a custom grid right here shift a click on our spline object all right and i'll just decrease this and we can right click for example and activate this grid and then we can use the select and link to link it to our spline object all right, so we did a little bit of work to set this up. We can also hide our custom grid right here. So the difference between this is that if you want to go back to using the default grid, you can simply select your custom grid, right click, activate the home grid. And you can see now the appearance changes of the custom grid and the home grid. Now the home grid is active. If you want the custom grid back, select it and then activate the grid. All right, so since it's linked now, when we move it, rotate it, and scale it, although we don't really need to scale it, you can see the custom grid is going to follow it. So we can really just hide it to prevent any kind of visual interference. All right, if you don't want to have to do this work every time we start to do this max, what you can do is save this file as maxstart.max and put it in your max start folder under your configure user paths. So you simply go into customize, configure project paths. So this is found in your C users name documents max version scenes so if you simply save this as max start and put this in your designated folder you will start up with this every single time all right so now that we have our custom helper right here our custom little spline helper we can start to actually use it so let's create a box all right and remember the box is being created on our custom grid here so if we rotate this the box now be created on that. All right, so obviously when you have this kind of situation, modeling becomes very difficult because if we select this, you can see how the default view or world does not really align with this at all. Now, one thing you can do if you rotate the object at the object level is that you can click on this, pick and pick the object itself. So the gizmo is now going to be rotated to be aligned with your object's pivot. In order to really see that, we have to switch this from view or world to local. So this is the object's local pivot. It changes as we rotate it. Which means if you're in your sub-object level and you're selecting vertices, edges, or polygons, and you have it set to pick, pick the object itself, then no matter how the object is rotated, you can still be able to move it and scale it align with the object that is one option if you rotate the object at the sub object level however all of that will no longer work because now now the object's local pivot is right here but the sub object is right here and this will happen as you create more and more complex objects when you have a very simple object in the planar situation right here then this makes sense but once your object starts getting very detailed suddenly you need to have a greater way to control this that's where this custom object comes in handy. 
So you need a script called 3.align, which you will find in the description. I've got that set to a hotkey, so I'm going to customize the hotkey editor. And so I've got that set to Alt M. You can see 3.align Alt M MB Tools category. So when I press Alt M, snaps will be automatically turned on. And now I need to pick three points of this object and three points of that object. So for example, let's say I want this to be aligned right here. I want the center to be aligned to this vertex. I want it to be aligned to this and this. I'm going to start with the center. And so the vertex snapping works with the splines as well. That's why I use splines in this situation. I think it's a little bit easier to see and orientate than the box. But you can also use a box instead of the spline. This is one. This is two. This is three. Make sure the text actually shows up. Because sometimes you can misclick and the text will not show up. So as you can see, one, two, three. Once you've done this a few times, you'll have a better understanding of how to choose the right order. So now here, one. You can see a very convenient line pointer here. Two. And then three. And now our custom grid and custom spline object is perfectly aligned to this. It's on the same vertex. It's perfectly aligned with this edge and with this one. And now we're going to switch this to grid. And now, as you can see, we have this perfect working situation right here. If you want to be in the same exact position, you can use the third option, which will move it actually right here. But in many situations, you want the first option where it will have the correct rotation, but it will be kind of put in the center of your current selection. All right, let's select it and press our hotkey again, Alt M. All right, this time I want it to be, let's say right here. So once again, one, two, three. Make sure you don't actually select any vertices on the back. So one, two, three, and now it's perfectly right here. And so once again, we can select this, for example, and as you can see, it's perfectly on this plane here. We can make sure rotation and scale are also set to grid. So in 3ds Max, you have a different system. You have a different settings for a move, rotate, and scale. So you want to make sure that if you're using scale, for example, they're also using grid right here. Rotation also using the grid. All right, let's say I want to rotate these polygons exactly right here. I can move this a little bit off to the side, make sure it's not getting confusing. Alt M. One, two, three. One, two, three. It's right there. And we can actually switch to rotation and actually use the third option, which means it's actually literally right there where the custom helper is custom grid. And as you can see, it's sorting right around there. This will help me make modeling a lot easier. Thank you for watching and take care.